the new flyers here. This one covers quarter one of 2024. That's January, February, and March. Welcome back. It's been a few weeks since I've made a video. I took a break during Christmas and New Year's. So we're back at it now, ready to start rolling with the new year. I hope you all had good holidays and your families were all safe and happy. So let's get right to this one. I've got some very interesting deals in this flyer I want to show you because it's a great flyer to do a comparison. I'm going to show you some things I recommend, but I'm also going to show you some things I don't recommend all in the same flyer. It's kind of like I'm competing against myself, but in the interest of giving you my honest evaluation of the deals that are available, I'm going to steer you toward and away from certain offers. So first on the docket are nitrile gloves from Gloveworks. They're made by a company called Amex. They get these manufactured for them in Malaysia. And a box of 108 mil thick nitrile industrial gloves. These are the orange ones with the diamond grip pattern are $30.49 per box. I can actually get you a better deal than this. We have branded our own gloves now, and you're going to see a video that's going to show all that, what goes into it. Uh, once, once everything's here and I have a chance to put it all on video for you, and I can do them for about half the price. So you can get the same gloves, same quality, made in a different location, but uh, an 8 mil thick nitrile orange diamond pattern glove I can do for about $15 a box. Um, so I put these in the, in the, in the video here to show you that while this is in my flyer, I have a identical product that's available at a much lower price. And that's the online price. People who finances on the truck to pay about $20 a box. So I can even save you 10 bucks a box. Now, when you compare this to other gloves, you'll see that there are some lower cost alternatives, both, uh, outrageous orange and SAS safety have an 8 mil thick and a 7 mil thick, respectively, orange diamond pattern nitrile glove available. The outrageous orange ones are $23.99 a box. SAS Safety is $24.99 a box. These gloves are all very similar. They perform identically, but still, the prices are even higher than the ones that we're getting in because we struck a deal with an overseas supplier where we get them directly from a factory. There is no middleman. You don't have to buy them through a distributor. You can buy them directly from me who buys them directly from the manufacturer. So in cases like that, you can save some money. And that's why we're able to sell them for what we sell them for. This is a brand new product from Ingersoll Rand. And I had a chance to start showing customers this flyer ad because I wanted to know what people's opinions were. My opinion is unformed yet. I'm dying to see what other people say about this. It is the new 2236 QTI Max impact gun from Ingersoll Rand. It has 10 different anvil options. They are all quick connect with what they call their drive exchange system. It comes with a half inch drive anvil and you can buy 10 other anvils in different configurations. 3 8 drive, half inch drive, with hog ring retainers, you can buy a half inch drive with a pin retainer. And then hog ring retainers of half inch drives at different lengths, as well as two three quarter inch offerings, uh, short and a six inch long. I don't know how something like this will actually perform in real life. The specs are 1500 foot pounds breakaway torque, but as we all know, those torque specs are done in a laboratory environment to find how the manufacturer defines them. So I don't know what the true torque is at your workpiece. Given that the anvil now is a quick connect instead of the one that is on the conventional impacts that have a dog and hammer system that actuates it. I suspect that you get better torque with this design than you would if you had a regular anvil and use an extension with it because there's not that extra play and movement in an additional piece. And when you do that, you create heat and that robs you of torque. But I don't know is what the longevity is of this. The gun comes with a two year warranty and the anvils all have a one year warranty. 
But as most people would use a regular half inch, oftentimes they overwork it, and that creates additional heat. That changes the temper of the metal, becomes brittle, and they crack anvils. It'd be very interesting to see the three quarter inch anvils working on the same work pieces that people normally see the breakage in the half inch ones for. So I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm dying for a channel like Torque Test Channel to look at this. I haven't seen him post anything on that yet. And I don't know who else might be posting anything on this. I do trust his information there. So he's normally the one that I gravitate toward when it comes to stuff like this. So very interesting to see what that's all about and how that pans out. It is listing for $599.99 and it does have a two inch extended ring anvil option for $649.99. So time will tell. I don't know what the adoption rate would be on this. As it is, I don't normally sell a lot of air impact tools, but this one might be a game changer for say, uh, uh, mobile crews who are on the road, this would be very good in a work truck where you can cut down on the number of impacts that you have to carry. Just carry this in an assortment of anvils, save yourself a ton of money, uh, and only rely on one tool. Will that be uh, you know, an advantage in the long run if the longevity of this tool is what, say, their 2235 Ti Maxes are? I don't know. But I'm dying to see what the adoption rate is on this. And as I continue to show people this in the flyer, and I get feedback on it. Uh, that also starts planting the seed. Maybe some guys will want to try it. We'll see. Uh, I know that I'm eager to, to know how it's going to pan out. Now, you compare those to the regular half-inch drive air impacts that Ingersoll has. This is their 2235 Ti Max that I talked about before. They come in three different colors, green, orange, and red, for $594.99. So as you compare this to the other one that I showed you, and you start adding up the cost of anvils, you're going to very quickly exceed the cost of one of these half-inch drive guns that are rated at 1,350 foot-pounds of torque, as opposed to the 1,500 on the interchangeable one. So I think that there's going to be a toss-up when it comes to cost and quality. We'll see if the other one can work just as well as the 2235s, because that's been the de facto for a long time. And here's a list of the anvils that are available in that drive exchange system. You can see they start at $53.99, and you can buy a four-piece set for $204.49 that has the half-inch drive, four-inch, six-inch, eight- and ten-inch. There's a two-piece set in three-quarter-inch that are six-inch anvils, and then the three-piece, three-quarter, half-inch, two-inch, half-inch, all four-inch length at $107.99. So, uh, I'm very interested. I, I like it when companies try something new that makes sense, and this is that kind of product. All that remains to be seen is what the adoptability is on this. If you're in the market for some tool storage and you need a toolbox, GearWrench has one that, again, I'm gonna kinda shy you away from. It's a 72-inch wide, 18-drawer, 25-inch deep, 47-inch high toolbox. 16 gauge steel body with 18 gauge steel drawers with ball bearings that are rated for 150 pounds. I assume that means each, which means all double slide drawers will be rated at 300 pounds and the quadruple slide drawers would be rated at 600 pounds. I like the weight rating. Um, you, it, it's, you don't see a lot of boxes that are rated that high but this is a fairly expensive box for what you get, but still it's worth comparing this to something like the Icon offering that Harbor Freight has, compare it to an Extreme Tools, maybe an RX series or, or even your EX series Pro. I would compare this to some of the, the mid-range Snap-on or Matco boxes, like maybe the 4S or the 5S on the Matco side, and the Master series on Snap-on, it's gonna be a lot less money. This is listing at Home Depot, for example, for about $5,500. So the price point's not bad. And I think for what you get, it might be worth it. But when you're looking for boxes, if you wanna buy new, this is worth a consideration, understanding that I think you can probably find a better deal, say, on the used market. And I am a fan of the Icon boxes at Harbor Freight. I know I'm talking myself right out of selling these things, but 
Honestly, I'm not really a toolbox salesman anyway, so it does not matter to me where someone buys your toolbox because it's probably not going to be for me anyway. But this is worth showing you because I like, uh, I like the offering, but uh, I've never seen one of these in a shop anywhere. These don't tend to get any traction when people are shopping for toolboxes. They gravitate toward areas besides the gear inch offerings. Let's switch gears into lighting. For years, I've been selling the Maxion Cyclops lights. I have been ordering them directly from Maxion, but now my distributor that I've been getting most of my tools through and who publishes this flyer is selling Maxion, which is great because it keeps the pricing about the same for me. It makes warranties easier because I can go through the distributor and get credit instead of going through the manufacturer. So I can apply that credit for larger orders where I don't order that much directly from the manufacturer. And I can sell these at a few dollars less than what I've been selling them for already on the truck. So the price comes down by about $4. And you can choose green, red, yellow, orange, or their new color, blue. The blue has been very popular. And these were very similar to other lights that you've seen under other brands because uh, the same company that makes these from Axion was making them for other companies too. And they're a great utility light. They're on a magnetic swivel base. They're rechargeable. Charge time is about three hours, and they're water resistant to, to a light splashing like you get from rain, and they're good performers. Unfortunately, a lot of people leave them stuck under a car, and the car drives away, and they're out of light. So just be careful. Maybe tie a ribbon to it or something that makes it more visible, or buy one of the brighter colors like the green, orange, or yellow, and you'll stand a better chance of seeing them. Here's another recommendation that I'll have to steer you away from. This was also from Maxion. This is their Workstar Luminator area light with a magnet base. It's a very good light. It's not the light that I have a problem with. It's not the mounting bracket I have a problem with. It's the pivot piece on the light housing that I have a problem with. So this bracket screws to the housing and that's how it pivots. That bracket is a weak point and I have sold a number of these in the past where the mount point on the housing cracks. Now, Maxion sent me a bunch of replacement brackets, and I kept telling them, it's not the bracket. So they, they eventually understood that, and they credited me for the lights. But what I was doing for a while was urging people to, instead of buy that light, look at the new rechargeable clamp light from Coast. This one costs significantly less than the Maxion Luminaire light about the same brightness, has a much more useful clamp base because you can clamp it onto something, you can rest it on something and use it as a standalone base and it has magnets that you can mount to a ferrous metal surface. The best part about this light is that it has a lifetime warranty. And I'm gonna swap it out for you on the truck if you need to take advantage of that. The Maxion Luminator work light has a one year warranty. So it's one of the many reasons why I favor Coast products or other manufacturers because what you get has more value under the Coast name because of the pricing, the warranty, and their craftsmanship and quality seems perfectly comparable with every other brand of light that I've seen. Switching gears to battery testers, here's a very good offering from Top Don. And some people I know are fans of this brand because they make scanners that people enjoy. They have some really good code readers and now they have this BT600 battery tester. What's nice about it? It has a long cord that you can sit in the car comfortably with. It has a printer built in, which is a great feature that costs you way more money on other brands and it has a nice display. It's fast easy to use. It's more intuitive than the Midtronics units and costs less. And it's faster than the Snap-on units, which have much shorter cables. And the display on the Snap-on units isn't nearly as nice. For $148.49, it's tough to go wrong. Just understand this about this unit. It is not a heavy duty unit by any stretch of the imagination. And I have sold two where I've seen uh, the, the clamps break. And there's a plastic over clamp with a copper insert. And that insert is set against a plastic 
uh, outer clamp with a screw and where the screw goes into that plastic piece that has broken on two units. I suggest being very careful with these. On one of them, I think the technician himself was using it. On the other, the technician lent it to his girlfriend who used it. So I don't know how they're being treated, but if you treat them with kindness and care, they'll, they'll last. But just know they're not heavy duty, and I can't say that they're truly pro-grade in that they're intended to put up with the daily rigors of a shop if you treat these like you treat a lot of your other tools. A little TLC with these goes a long way and they should work very well for you for a very long time. They come with three rolls of thermal printer paper and I sell the replacement paper on the truck if you ever didn't need them. So great option for the budget conscious technician who'd be doing a lot of battery testing. Uh, it's handy to just hook this thing up, print out a slip, put it in the work order for the customer and give that back to your service writer so he has that information. Just know that it's gonna, that there's a couple of weak points on it that if you mistreat or, or handle a little roughly, it uh, might cause you to have to take advantage of their warranty claim. So um, just, just know that going in. It's not the perfect unit, but for the money, I don't think you can buy a better one. Back to lighting, these are offerings from Milwaukee. They have the underbody light kit, which people tell me is very popular, although I have not sold one. It's rather expensive and I don't see me putting that on the truck anytime soon because of the high price tag. They have the USB stick light and a rechargeable headlamp. Now, I will steer away from these offerings too. And I love Milwaukee for a lot of reasons. I love their hand tools, I love their power tools, but I don't love their lighting because they don't consider these professional grade products. Milwaukee consider these personal lighting products and as a result, a completely different division of the company handles warranty claims on these and it is not at all easy to deal with. They don't handle it directly. We have to go through third parties and it's a big pain in the neck. So in the interest of getting you solid, reliable lights that are handled well under warranty and can put up with the rigors of everyday use and it has the after sale service where you would expect as a professional, I would look to Coast Lighting for that too. So love Milwaukee, don't love their lighting and I don't love the way they handle their warranties because it's prohibitively hard for me um, to have to do that. And anything that makes my life that difficult, um, I, will, I, I, I will tend to shy away from because it makes your life difficult, unfortunately, because it takes more time and more effort for me to get a light back to you. Let's go into diagnostics and talk about the Autel 906 Pro Diagnostic Tablet. This little guy has been a very good seller lately. And the reason I like it so much is because it does so many functions for US, European, and Asian cars. And you'd be hard pressed to need more functionality in a different unit and spend twice as much. This guy right now is hovering right around $2,000 for a price tag. You can probably find it for less somewhere else, but be warned, and I'm gonna give you a story here that was given to me by a customer after he gave me a broken unit to see if I could help him with it. So, about eight or nine months ago, a customer bought one of these uh, from somebody else and he said, it's not working right, can you handle it for me? And the process is very simple. I call Autel, they give us a return authorization, we send it to them and they tell us what's up with that. Now, this was bought less than a year ago, so it's still under warranty. But Autel said, it's gonna cost you $300 for us to fix this. And I said, why? And they said, because we have to make it US compliant. I said, hmm, that's interesting. So I went back to my customer and I said, where did you buy it? And he said, I bought it off of Amazon. I said, do you know who sold on Amazon? He said, yes, I do. And he showed me the receipt and it said, you know, on the right hand side in that, in that uh, where it says sold by, it had a company called Autel Direct. And he said, I bought it directly from Autel because look, it says it right here. So I go to Amazon, find the same product page. I click on the link to Autel Direct and it takes me to the seller's page and the seller, Autel Direct, is the online store of a Chinese company which is not Autel. So, 
where he bought an Autel unit, which was built to the Chinese standard on Chinese software. Although it was in English, it was China compliant and not U.S. compliant. And they're selling it in the U.S. under their name Autel Direct on their Amazon marketplace. So what the customer thought was a purchase directly from the company, and he could have every faith that it would be handled under warranty. He did not realize that it was not compliant to the U.S. import standards for software, and it's going to now cost him $300 to get that righted by Autel U.S. Be warned, when you buy stuff on Amazon, eBay, and other retailer, retailers, they don't necessarily buy the way you're expected them to buy you shouldn't have to worry about this kind of thing. You should be able to trust that when you buy something from a U.S. retailer that you're getting something that's U.S. compliant. Normally, why would you even question that, right? Because it's something that most people don't understand. Um, but it's a, it's a reality of when we import computer equipment from other countries, there are import standards and security standards for software. So what do you do? Uh, be vigilant. Dig a little bit. Look and see who's actually selling stuff. Maybe call them and say, hey, is this covered under a U.S. warranty? And see what the answer is. These things typically fall apart pretty quick if there's, if the, I won't say it's a scam, but I'll say it's probably the next closest thing to a scam. It's kind of like you, you were led to believe something that isn't true. And while you might consider that a scam, the customer did get the product he ordered. He just didn't get the version he thought he was getting. So, he was, he was done wrong by the seller. Be vigilant. Do a little bit of homework. Ask a friendly retailer, if you know, as someone who's trustworthy, if he or she can tell you what's up with buying something from some reseller channel that you're thinking of and see what they say. Um, I, I can guarantee that if I buy it through my U.S. distributor, it comes from Autel U.S., so it's all U.S. compliant. And if it's not, it's on me. Uh, this way, unfortunately, my customer has no recourse but to either do without or pay the $300. So that's where I'm with at. He's opting to pay the $300, bucks, um, which makes sense considering the price of the units around two grand. So he's going to do that, but he's not happy about it. Let's go back to Top Don and talk about handheld thermal imaging cameras. I have not seen one of these in real life, but for $522.49, it's on the same price point as... Say the Milwaukee ones, Autel has an excellent thermal imager that I really love. I don't know what Snap-on's pricing is on theirs. Um, and I don't know what the resolution is of these guns. But be cautious when you are in the market for a thermal imager. Answer this question for yourself. And that is how much value will you get out of it? And how many times will you actually use it? And base that on... How many times you really could need it now without having one? You might find that, yeah, it's a nice to have, but you don't need to have it. Uh, unless you're in a different industry, unlike the automotive industry, where there's other ways to tell the temperature of stuff. Uh, granted, this does give you a quick look if you're looking at a manifold or looking at a place that might have a leak. And you can see some, some hotter temperatures in certain areas. But there might be other, other, um, other industries where you find this to be far more handy than say the, the folks that I mainly deal with in automotive. So when you look at thermal imagers, you may or may not want to consider top down, certainly throw it in the mix anyway and see and, and weigh out your pricing, weigh out your, your, um, your warranty. I will say that top down is not the easiest company to deal with with warranty. Um, as I'm working through these two BT 600 battery testers with them, it's a little clunky. A lot of it's my learning curve because I've never had to do it before. But we'll see how it goes after we submit all the proper information to them, and we'll go from there. More Top Don products are being talked about a lot in the automotive technician circles when it comes to diagnostic scanners. And I know that there's a few YouTubers out there that use their stuff. Uh, Jimmy Making It Work has a Top Don. I believe he's got the Phoenix lines, uh, one of the Phoenix lines, if I'm not mistaken, and I don't know if Jimmy watches my channel much. I have seen him on here in the past. But Jimmy, if you are watching and you'd like to weigh in on, on the Top Don scanner that you have, I'd love for you to you know put a testimonial, good, bad, or otherwise, what you know about it in the comments. That'd be awesome. And these are the different 
Scanners in the Phoenix lineup, their Phoenix Elite, the Smart, the Remote, and the Max all have slightly different features and all range in price from about two to $5,000. So depending on what you're looking to do will dictate which of these units you gravitate toward. And it's a really good comparison if you're gonna look at say Launch or Autel. Bosch is kind of priced themselves in a completely separate market. If you're looking at Matco, know that those scanners are made by launch to Matco specifications. And uh, some people don't like them because they don't perform too well for them. Personally, I've never had issues with launch products before, but Autel uh, has proven to be a very good company to work with, good brand, good product support. So they're the ones I tend to gravitate toward, especially because they're so prolific in, in, in the workplace. If you're looking to make the move to the Milwaukee M18 cordless line of impacts, now is a very good time to consider their 3.8s, their mid-torque 3.8s and or their high-torque half, high half inch. They come in a kit as well. And you can save yourself a few bucks if you buy the two guns, the charger, two batteries, and a contractor bag that comes with it. You can buy them individually and save yourself a few bucks. But now is the time to go into their half inch ones because this is their new half inch drive. This is their 2967 model. It's an upgrade from the previous version that they had. This one has a LED ring light on the front. It's a bit more compact. I think the body's about an inch shorter. Has 100 foot pounds more reverse torque at 1500 foot pounds. And it has four power settings for manageability and control. And the 3.8 boasts 600 foot-pounds of breakaway torque and the same as the other features that I'd mentioned on the half inch. So they finally nailed everything right on the half inch, especially because they put a battery isolator on the base, so now the batteries fit much tighter and more snugly and you don't have that play in them that you used to in their older version. So good on Milwaukee, they nailed this design. I've been selling as many as I can put on the truck of these because the half inch is something that so many people are gravitating toward because a lot of fans of Milwaukee have been looking out for these product improvements. They finally have them. This is the one to go to if you're looking to either upgrade from the one you currently have or if you're looking for your first cordless half inch impact, absolutely consider the 2967 from Milwaukee. The best part about Milwaukee is their warranties and their warranty process aside from the quality of the tools. Five-year warranties on the tools, three-year warranties on the batteries, extremely easy to get that taken care of. You can do it yourself, I can do it for you, which either either, either is ju just as easy. Um, you can just go online into their portal, enter some information, and, uh, and bing, bang, boom, put it in a box, send it off, and, and you're good to go. Just wait for it to come back, and they either repair or replace it at their discretion, and their, and their turnaround is very fast. So I've been extremely happy with the division of Milwaukee that handles their power tool repairs and warranties. Let's look at air hammers. There's two offerings from Ingersoll that are worth considering. The old trusty 119 Max has been their long barrel air hammer for years. Um, it did not compete effectively power-wise against the Matco and the Snap-on ones, but it's been an extremely reliable unit for them. As a one-year warranty, costs under 300 bucks. And for the value, unless you need something that is stronger, there is no reason to not get the 119 Max. It comes in a kit as well as, 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 well as it's uh, a standalone version. The kit has five non-warrantied air hammer bits with it. So just understand that if you break a bit, you'll have to buy a new one. Um, if you buy it from me, I'll replace them with ones that do have lifetime warranties. So you won't have to worry about that. But there's also now the new 135 Max Air Hammer for $395.49. It is less money than the Mako and Snap-on ones, but it competes right alongside them with power. The kit comes with five bits. It is a beast. I have sold this to a break and alignment shop, and they are hard on their tools, and they work on everything that rolls in their doors, and they said this one is Dynamite works great. They love the power make short work of their toughest jobs So if you need a powerful Long barrel air hammer and you don't want to spend snap on a Mako pricing 
Ingersoll finally gives us a good option with their 135 max offering. Has a two-year warranty, and the kit comes with five bits, or you can buy the tool by itself and save yourself a few bucks. The price on Creepers uh, keeps dropping, which I love to see, so I'm going to compare this one from K-Tool with the ones from Lyle. And this is the 36-inch plastic Creeper. It's only $58.99. I have to see if that's a misprint <laughs> because that seems strangely low for the Creeper. The last price this was published at was about 80 bucks, which is still way lower than competing Creepers. This one has a 300 pound weight capacity, six two inch swivel casters and a padded headrest and a contour for your back and shoulders. Pretty good Creeper for the money, you can't go wrong. When you compare this to the Lyle Jeepers Creepers, these are the de facto and plastic Creepers. This same Creeper, is sold under the Cornwell, Mac, and Matco brands. They have a custom wheel for the Matco ones. That's that translucent skateboard style wheel. And it's branded for them and for the other companies that I just mentioned. But the prices are through the roof. $148.49 for all but the green and orange ones, which for some reason cost $20 more. Not a fan of the pricing. I think the Creeper's fine, but like... Every other creeper that's this style, the plastic cast is going to wear out. Those are not covered under warranty. The plastic deck is covered under a lifetime warranty, but that's it. The head pad and the casters, are, you're out of luck on if those break. And you're going to crack the headrest and you're going to wear down the casters. They're not expensive to get replaced, but geez, for 150 bucks, you think it will come with a better warranty. I know I do, so I would urge you to look at something like the K-Tool one for a whole lot less money. Why not save yourself $100 on a Creeper? I mean, seriously, that's not even close in my mind. I don't know why the pricing on the on these from Lyle have not gone down. And it's a bummer to see because I don't, that's just a lot of money for a plastic Creeper. I mean, if you're going to spend that kind of money on a Creeper, look for something with a steel frame, with a heavier-duty caster, with larger wheels. Some, I don't Something that will justify paying that much more for it. I can finally talk about Jax again in a way that I feel good about instead of bad-mouthing everyone for their insanely high prices. K-Tool International is right back down to a normal price on a very high quality three and a third ton or 3.33 ton low profile service jack. This one's $334.99. Has a lift range from 3.5 to 21.375 inches. 50 inch long handle, gives you a lot of leverage. And it has a dual piston pump. I love this track a lot. I sold many of these, never had a problem with them. They're all still in service. And I've sold two to one shop that uses them all day, every day. And they don't have any issues with them at all. Now you compare that to the one above this. They're 3.5 ton for $260 more. I do not recommend that one because I think you're spending way too much money unless you need that extra capacity, but it's only a matter of a few hundred pounds because it's, what, 0.2 tons, which is a couple hundred pounds difference? I mean, that's not much. I, I don't know that there is a compelling reason to buy the 3.5 ton at 591.49 over the 3.33 ton at 334.99. Go with the 3.33 ton unless that couple hundred pounds difference in capacity is going to make a functional difference to you. Hammers have been something that Milwaukee has never dabbled in until I want to say about a year ago. They announced four new hammers. They're 16 ounce, 28 ounce, 32 ounce, and 48 ounce in steel headed ball peen or soft faced configurations all four are dead blow styles which means they don't vibrate up the handle and wreck your arm you have seen me show you these on tool hole videos before they have a flat head so you can stand them with the handle up on the handle on the butt end is the size of the hammer so you can see it if you're looking down on it they have holes in the handle that you can use for a, a lanyard or a hanging loop and the grips on these are fantastic they're very sure grip they put a lifetime warranty on them. Compare these prices to snap-ons and you'll find the hammers are of similar quality. The prices are much lower and 
handling warranties for these is just as easy for me as it is handling anything else. I just go through my distributor. I just give you new ones. Simple. And I, I'm a big fan of these hammers. Since Milwaukee came out with them, they've been a very good seller. Haven't yet had a problem with any of them, so I've not had to take advantage of the warranty process. But I'm confident that if and when that does happen, the customer is going to be happy with it because I can do it pretty quick. If you need a digital inspection video scope or a bore scope, look at this from Autel. For $324.49, their MV460 gives you a very nice picture. High resolution was 1920 by 1080, three and a half inch color display, and a great 70 degree field of view for an expanded viewing angle. Compare this to Snap-on. You will find the picture quality to this to be superior to the Snap-on one, and this costs far less. I've sold a few of these. Everyone's been stoked to get them, and it's a breath of fresh air when they see these after the experience they have had with other brands. Great picture quality, very reliable, very easy to diagnose what's going on when you have a picture that is as high quality as this one. Now, you compare this to the M12 Technician Borescope from Milwaukee, which is considerably more expensive. At $599.99, you're getting a slightly larger screen. I don't really know what the functional differences are in this. Granted, I've not actually seen a Milwaukee one at work in real life, but I have a hard time believing that the price difference is justified by an improvement in quality or functionality. If I were you, I'd go with the Autel one because I don't know that there's much value in spending that much more money on the Milwaukee one. You've seen me talk a lot about the 114-piece standard metric ratcheting tap and die set from GearWrench, and I am happy to report to you that there's a really nice price on this one, a $419.49. I've shot a whole video giving the entire rundown of this kit with a tutorial on the different types of taps and dies, how to use the tap and die wrenches, how the collet holders work, great kit. I have sold many of these, and what usually spurs the sales of these in the shop is when one person buys them, someone looks at the kit, they borrow some pieces out of it, they love it, they love the wrenches, they love the taps and dies, because you get the selection of all the larger sizes in these, and you'll save a ton of money over the Irwin one, which is sold, on, of course, under the, the Irwin Hansen name, but also it's the same one that Matco and Mac Tools sells, but it costs way more than this gear inch one. So do yourself a favor, get yourself all the sizes and variations of taps and dies that you need with a superior tap wrench or wrenches. There's two in this one. Uh, they're ratcheting, beautiful, full polish with nice rubber inlays. You can hold the taps and dies plumb much easier, so you get a much better start to your work. And if you're disappointed on this one, I'll eat my hat because if your experience is the same as anyone else's, you'll be enthusiastic about this kit. And finally, we have some adjustable work tables from K-Tool. I like a couple of things about these, but don't like a couple of things about them. They change the design a little bit from the older version. And these pictures are of the older version, so they're not a, an accurate representation of what the new ones in the box are. But they did drop the price. So for $160.99, you can choose red, black, or green. Things I like. They improved the corner protectors. There's these rubber corner protectors that used to be held on with these plastic like body panel clips that always break and fall off. They upgraded that. They're now held on with aluminum rivets. Good, there's an upgrade. The powder coat finish on these is beautiful. They're matte finish instead of glossy. They look real nice. Much nicer, I think, than the glossy finish that they had on the previous unit. So two good things going there. Third thing in their favor is it's a lower price. Uh, the highest I saw these was about a year ago. They were over 200 bucks, and they were too expensive. I wouldn't put them on the truck. But for $160.99, yeah, I'll put these on the truck. But here's the downside. I'm not a fan of two things that they've done. One of them is where the cross piece on the bottom that connects to the two legs that have the casters on them, that is now a square piece. And I don't like it because a lot of times when they weld that piece, it doesn't come out perfectly square. So what you get is a little cockeyed, and that makes the whole base kind of wobble. Difficult to overcome. Um, and when so many of them were like that, 
I have found that I've, I had to do my best in putting an adjustable caster on there with a jam nut so I can, I can adjust it so it is level and just tell people, by the way, there's an adjustable caster on there if it gets wonky on you. And people are happy with that, but uh, I wish it came out of the box better from the factory. Number two, where those casters thread into that base, that's something I have to do myself because they come disassembled. And uh, part of what I have to assemble is the casters into the base. Well, there's just a, th a thread cert in there and sometimes the threads are goofed up on these where you start the caster and then it locks the thread and then you can either go forward nor back. And if you try to force it, you spin that thread cert loose and now it's useless and now I can't use the base. So unfortunately what I have is a collection of parts in these sitting on the floor of my home office because I had to call my, my supplier. I got credit for them, um, but it's a real hassle. So I might find that it's not worth that the, the price savings. There's a $20 difference between these and the ones that I get from Medco, which are sold under the ATD brand. They're, they're 20 bucks more, but if they're more reliable out of the box, I am all for that. And you would be too, because the last thing you wanna have to do is deal with me having to cycle through these things until I get ones that are right for you. That's not fair to either of us. And so far, the ones I've gotten from Medco have been spot on. The casters come already attached to the base, which lowers the work I have to do, which is great. So it's more efficient for me to put these together. And they tend to have a higher quality end product. I'm, I, I like the finish on these K-Tool ones, though. So I don't know if ATD is doing something similar with their textured matte finishers or not. If they are, then they're going to compete very well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but no one's really had a problem with it. I guess if you compared them side by side, you could say, yeah, I like this finish over this finish. But, you know, if it's the only one that I have available to you, it wouldn't be a, a, a game changer for you. So I hope that I've been able to show you the good, the bad, and, and all the stuff in between. If you've got experience with some of these things, please leave it in the comments. And if you like something, say why. If you don't like something, please also say why. There's nothing worse than a comment when someone says, this product sucks, and they don't say, they don't say why. Uh, give me your experiences, share them with everybody. It helps everyone make purchasing decisions and, and we're all better off for it. So keep watching the channel because we've got tools in the hall videos coming out. Of course, we're gonna be doing some air tool repairs and I've got some cool gun videos I also wanted to show you. So do me a favor, click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching and remember, use a tool, don't be one. <laughs>